Hello, I'm Kyle, and at this very moment, I'm quite happy. This is Kim and John. They're quite happy too. I'm happy, Kyle. I'm sorry. See, I told you so. But 43 years ago, things were very different. You see, Kim, also known as Fook, was brought over to America in 1974 by the family that she worked for. Unfortunately, in America, this family abused her and denied her of school and many other things, including her own identity, completely cutting her off from all ties with Vietnam. They didn't even mail all the letters that she wrote to her mom. When she was able to escape from them by pretending she was pregnant, she was kicked out with only three dollars to her name and no English whatsoever. A few years later, when she had enough courage to face her tormentors, they moved away and disappeared. Many years later, Kim met John and had children and lived a relatively normal life, all the while wondering what happened to her family in Vietnam. You see, when Kim was a child, there was a war going on and her mother constantly moved around. She didn't even remember her own hometown. She didn't even know her mom's real name because her mom didn't even use her real name. And plus, in Vietnamese culture, official names are seldom used. Everyone knows each other by a nickname or a family name. She did, however, remember her younger sister's first names, and even with a last name, it would have been very impossible because Vietnamese names are often the same. She did remember working in Saigon, and that was about it. There was very little hope, until John finally found the son of the family who brought her over to America. He remembered some paperwork with her name on it, and without his mother's knowledge, sent John Kim's ID. And on that ID, there was an address in Saigon. And this is where I come into the story. Ready? Let's roll. Ooh. Everything has changed, of course. Of course, after the fall of Saigon, many things changed, including the homeowners. We were hoping that someone would remember certain names, like her sister's name, or the people who she used to work for. We just knocked on the doors and recited names. One name was familiar to this woman here, and she led us to a couple, the only couple who lived there before 1975 and still remained in the alley. Their nephew knows the daughter of the woman named Huai, who's Kim's younger sister, Tan, used to work for. They gave me his number, but it didn't work, so we tried their home phone, and I didn't know how to use it. Eventually, it worked, and I was given another number and made a call. <laughs> And it just so happened that Mrs. Hua was in town, visiting from America. Không hiểu. Bây giờ thì bây giờ thì thế này, ngày mai yeah. đi ra Long Hải, mày tìm ngay đến cái gọi là cái trạm y tế, okay. trạm, y tế. trạm y tế Long Hải, yeah. mày hỏi cái cô, cô Thành lấy chồng làm hãng nước đá. Yeah. Yeah. Cô con nhìn cô ra liền. Chín đứa, mày thì bà trông thấy vẫn nhớ, yeah. như dạng này mập. Early morning, we made our way to Long Hai, a coastal town not too far from Saigon. With new highways, the journey there without traffic could be done in as little as an hour and a half. How do you feel uh, this morning, though? Me? Yeah. Uh, excited and nervous. Yeah. 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 I really sad this morning, actually. I yeah. woke up at four, uh, quiet. Yeah. And I happy, you know, that we get some Lee. Why sad? I don't know. <laughs> that when sometimes you're so happy, you yeah. sad. Yeah. No, no. But you cry. Has that ever happened to you, John? You're so happy that you're sad? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> These days, this area is a developing tourist area with salt fields all around. 
back in the old days. Well, mấy cái đường cũ hồi đó nó bị nó bị min đó em nó nổ rồi mấy cái đường nó bị lủng 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 hết. Right, wow, hồi xưa là là đường đất mà. Uh. Đấy, đâu có đường đường dưới như đó. Sẽ trái về hướng đường 36, sau đó sẽ phải vào đường 36. And so on the way to the medical clinic, we kind of got lost, and I asked for directions, but got a lot more in return. Okay, so the man that we are following right now, he works at a small government outpost area, and I told him that we need to find the hospital where Kim's sister used to work at, or maybe still does, but he suggested that we go talk to this woman who uh, used to work there for sure. So that might be a better lead, who knows, but uh, every lead we have to follow. Her next door neighbor heard the commotion and the story and offered to guide us to another lady. She was here since the fall of Saigon. A lot of these people here in this area, they came after the war. And at this moment, I knew we found them. Don't lose them, don't lose them, don't lose them. Oh, come on, come on, get out of the way. <laughs> oh, your life is gonna change yes. one way or the other, you know? Yes. Right, here we go, here we go, here we go. But I'm shocked right now. <laughs> Oh, wait, where they go? Where they go? Where they go? Oh, yo. But did he turn in here though? For sure? I wasn't looking. Okay, so she's, okay, so she sold the house here and now we gotta keep going. Damn, the, ah, the cabbage! Is that ah, get out of here, the leafy greens, oh, mustard greens. Get, get out of here. Oh, ready? Are you ready? Yep. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's time. Vậy là chị Phước, phải không? Uh-huh, chị Phước. Dạ, đây. Vô nhà. Vô nhà. Cái này trong đó nè. Bây giờ em chỉ hỏi nè, hồi hai đi hai đi từ ở đâu? Sài Gòn. Dạ ở nhà ai? Chị Đầm. Rồi đúng rồi. Em có biết quá quà không? That my father, they, they never found he, he body. And after 43 years, two sisters reunited with lots to talk about. And don't forget about the brother-in-law. He's a good guy too. I love her so much. John seemed pretty happy. He put a lot of effort into this. A lot of effort into eating chicken feet too. His favorite food, by the way. And every Vietnamese 43-year reunion special needs a lot more food. And there was another important matter. Finding Tan was the key to finding Kim's mom. And so with heavy hearts, we hurried back to Saigon as the sun was rapidly setting. And Kim was about to meet some of her half-sisters for the first time. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, 
Kim's mother suffered a stroke and has been bedridden for over six years. Doctors initially gave her only a few months to live. When I called Kim's younger sister Tao to ask for their address, Tao was shocked and so happy at the same time. She couldn't believe it. Her life was at its typical routine and a phone call from a strange voice my strange voice, this one here. And suddenly a few hours later, a mysterious figure just walked in through the doors. And suddenly now you have an older sister, the same one you've heard about all throughout your life. Just take a moment to imagine that for me. <laughs> <laughs> One moment to not having any family at all, to having it all, and to even share a meal with them. And one family led and spread to more family. Cousins, aunts, distant cousins, cousins' kids, cousins' aunts' kids, aunts' uncles, uncles' aunts, and it was like winter suddenly passed and spring was in full bloom. A blossoming of family from a girl who left when she was 14 years old, and now, as a woman for the first time, she has family. And these people helped her discover her own identity. In fact, Kim finally learned her real name, her father's name, her mother's name, and so many other things. It just wasn't about the past, though. It was about the present and moving forward now with family. And it was as if they never left each other. We will see you later. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, Very yeah, good. Thank you. Nàng chúc ngủ ngon. Chúc ngủ ngon. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Uh, a few days later, Kim had a chance to visit her father's grave for the first time ever. His gravestone was just a representation because his body was never found. Until the day before Kim's departure back to America. <laughs>
It's quite hard to believe, I know. But just a couple days after Kim's visit to the cemetery, Kim's brother-in-law called me to tell her that her father's remains have been found. And yes, everyone was shocked. Không biết cái chỗ đó nó có cái gì đó. Đó đó đúng rồi. nhà nó là tìm được. Tìm được. Như như vậy là chắc em nghĩ là chắc cái đám này là mấy cái ông này mấy ông đã chôn hồi xưa. Thì ông mới biết đích xác cái chỗ đó là ba mình. Thì ông mới báo mình được. Rồi mà ông chờ 50 năm sau mà ông mới báo. This man knew Kim's father, and now he volunteers his time to find lost remains and alert families. He recounted stories and was quite certain of how her father passed and his whereabouts. The reason why they haven't uncovered her father's remains yet is because the man who buried her father went to Hanoi after the war and assumed that the remains were found. Then one day last year, he came back as a tourist and realized that the area was untouched. A year later and again right on Kim's final day in Vietnam, the government granted permission to dig. And just like on the first evening that we set out in Saigon to find Kim's old workplace, the skies unleashed a steady stream of rain on us as we hiked into the jungle. The exact location was unknown. It's been 49 years after all. The jungle definitely changed, but luckily the rock and cave formations didn't much, and the B-52 bomb craters still were visible, giving clues to exactly where Kim's father could be. I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know what to put right now. But hope. Mm. Mm. Crazy, huh? Crazy audit here. I mean, the past few days. <laughs> yeah. Only the past few days, really. Yeah. I don't think I can have this day. So like that I'm dreaming at the fun here, you know? So your only memories of your father was when he returned in the middle of the night to visit you? Yeah. yeah. You never went anywhere with him? You never... No, no. He, I see him a couple of times. That's a couple of times I remember. By the fourth hour, the first bones were uncovered. Oh, of course this man was happy. At the age of 14 or 15, he was the one who buried Kim's father. By the time you're watching this video right now, DNA tests have not been confirmed, but remains from six different people were found and chances are, Kim's father was finally found. This time, 10 days ago, you had no family. No family, that's me. Yeah. And now you found your uh, your entire family. Yeah. That hung it up there. My <laughs> whole entire family. So glad you here. It's fear and all. Believe it, believe it. Because remember when we get here, it was oh, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> it happened, all right. You know. Before leaving Vietnam, Kim and John bought English books and donated whiteboards and chairs and tables to a girl's orphanage. They were studying on the ground before. Now they don't have to anymore. Thank you, thank you for helping out. They're gonna 
they're gonna use these chairs for a while. Yeah, no, that makes us so happy. Um, <laughs> yeah, we see that. They it's, smile it's just, and they fish it excited. They're jumping around. I'd be really happy, <laughs> yeah. you know, to With the see the books this. and right. CDs. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so. The desk and the boards, and it's just gonna help them just get better and better. So yeah. it's, it's oh, yeah. awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Family moments like these, and family moments like these. And souls at ease, shoulders not so heavy anymore. Minds at peace enough to stroll on a beach like this. And all of these things were only possible because of the kindness and help from familiar faces, some unseen in this video, and many others seen. Some of these strangers went out of their way, and this reunion could not have been possible without their efforts and their goodwill. Everyone contributed. Everyone was a part of this journey. Everyone was a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you come? <laughs> and of course, major kudos to John and his sleepless nights of research, preparations, and encouragement, and for loving and supporting Kim and being her only family. Until now. The Vietnam of today is a lot different than the Vietnam of the past. Despite a war, despite an ocean, and despite zero contact, 43 years, one thing never changed. Family. Thank you for watching.